Hey, what's up, YouTube? I thought I'd do a quick, real fast video. Um, I don't know if too many of you remember Garth Brooks. He was a country singer. Uh, he also had an alter ego named Chris Gaines. I remember this briefly because this happened a long time ago. I do believe in 1999. 2000 2001 now i wanted to play this video in it in its entirety and give credit to the original creator um and i will post a link in my description so i think it's important that us truth seekers and the ones that are are new to this especially the ones that are new to this to pay attention to this video pay attention to how they are constantly changing their appearance to make it look like they are someone else. Um, so this is a perfect example of something way back when, 20 years ago, how in today's, you know, technology, it's even, even more greater with the mask and, uh, you know what I'm saying? I know we're trying to get rid of, trying to use that word, but lack of better term, uh, what else word can you use? Uh, putting on a full, you're putting on a full person because you're not portraying the person that you have put on the world stage as us knowing. Now you're putting this alter ego or this other person that we are supposed to believe is a whole entire different person. And this is what these people do, okay? There's numerous of them. And I think that on a few of, you know, the channels, the truth, cha truth or channels, we had called those out. I have called those out, okay? This doesn't make it any different. This is, a, this is just a good example of how 20 years ago they were doing this. I mean, of course, they didn't been doing it way before then. But right this this one right here is right in front of your face. They even created a whole backstory, a whole storyline about this alter ego character of Garth Brooks. Now, whether Garth Brooks is, was originally a country singer or if he was originally an alternative singer, alternative rock singer, I do not know. I just know that this man went from a heavy set country and western singer to a thin alternate rock singer um it even went to the point where they made albums and a movie i do believe that was supposed to be released and it explains in, in this this next clip that i'm going to that i'm going to play and again the clip i'm playing of course is not my creation I give all credit to the creator of the next clip and I will link the, de the description, excuse me, a link, the original um, creator's link in my description so you could check it out. But I wanted to put this video out here to give you a very good example of how they've been tricking the masses for a long time. This one in particular just had to be in front of their our faces um they wanted they wanted us to know that it was an alter ego but right now they are doing these alter egos behind the scenes to we to a point where we don't know who they are but we're figuring that figuring out who they are and uh those for who have the eyes we can see right through it and again my quote is i'm calling out the bullshit okay um so you know i'm gonna let the clip play um and and you go ahead and decide and please comment below um because i'm real interested in knowing your thoughts um, and your ideas on this. So uh, I'm just going to let the video play. And like I said, 
please leave me a comment and let me know what you think about this. of games came with quite the elaborate backstory. The idea drawn up by Garth for Chris Gaines was that Gaines was born in Brisbane, Australia in the year of 1967 and eventually moved to Los Angeles, California with his mother and father when he was just five years old. Gaines would eventually attend high school but ended up leaving school to start a rock band with his friend Tommy. Their rock band was called Crush. Gaines and Tommy's band Crush would play throughout local bars, but would eventually make it big and go on a tour. However, that tour would come to an abrupt end when Gaines' friend Tommy, who was also a licensed pilot, passed away in a plane crash. After the passing of Tommy, Gaines took the news pretty hard and also had to deal with a lot of pressure coming from his manager at the time. Chris Gaines worked through his troubles where he released a solo album titled Straight Jacket that apparently did exceptionally well and hit the top of the charts and sold over 12 million copies. Pretty intense story so far, right? Okay. But even after the success from his debut album, hard times would strike again to Chris Gaines. Gaines wounds up finding himself out of money after deciding to settle out of a contract with his crooked manager, and then Gaines' father also passes away from cancer. That would leave Gaines angry and sending him into some weird, crazy sex addiction. To the point where Gaines releases a second album in 1992 and titles it Fornicopia. But wait, there is more. Gaines faces another obstacle around the same time of the release of his second album. But this time, Gaines ends up getting into a car crash where he needed plastic surgery to fix the disfigurement in his face. Now, just real quick, this is actually the part where Garth Brooks steps in and the world is introduced to what Gaines looks like after the surgery. This is probably where a lot of you guys saw a slimmed up Garth with an ass kicking soul patch. But let, let's go ahead and get back to the backstory of Gaines here for just a minute. Gaines goes on to make two other albums, the third album being Apostle and the fourth album being Triangle. Eventually, we would get to an album that we all pretty much probably know of, and that's Chris Gaines' Greatest Hits, also known Garth Brooks in the Life of Chris Gaines. This would be the album in which Garth Brooks is seen on the cover, slimmed up, hair all in his eyes, and again with that ass-kicking soul patch. So now that I have went over just a little bit of the crazy detailed backstory, let's make our way from here explaining where Garth takes us with this wild idea. Okay, so Brooks's plan was to release this greatest hits album of Chris Gaines for the purpose of the movie The Lamb. The album dropped a year in advance of that movie on September 28, 1999. It was also to try and get fans more interested in hearing Garth perform rock music than instead of his traditional country sound. Throughout the time of its release, the album actually went on to reach number two on the Billboard 200 chart, and the song titled Lost in You off of that same record gave Brooks his only top 40 song from that album on U.S. Billboard Hot 100 chart. That song actually peaked, I believe, at number five. Interesting fact, none of the songs on that record were even written by Garth. So, 
Not only did Brooks make an album as Chris Gaines, he also portrayed Gaines in public. Brooks made a public appearance as Chris Gaines on Saturday Night Live while he was also the guest host as himself, Garth Brooks. And he was ultimately roasted by comedian Tracy Morgan. Morgan told Garth to drop Chris Gaines like a hot plate because you can see his gut through his outfit. If you were that big, they'd be calling you Garth Brooks. Trust me, Garth would even take it a step further to try and convince fans that Gaines was some real rock star by him starring as Chris Gaines in a VH1 behind the music documentary where it told the story of Gaines' life, the story behind Gaines' musical past with him and his friend Tommy in the band Crush, and his solo career. You gotta admit, all of this is quite bizarre and pretty comical. I mean, just think about Garth Brooks putting on a wig and being all dark and mysterious. Not really anything like the true Garth that we all know. But now, after all of the effort that Garth Brooks and his team put behind creating and building this character of Chris Gaines, the movie The Lamb may have been planned for release, but it never had a chance and was never filmed. Now, if it wasn't already confusing enough, let me explain what the movie was even supposed to be about. This may come as a shock, but the damn movie wasn't even really focused around Chris Gaines and his music. The movie actually opens with Chris Gaines dead, and the plot behind the movie is about a female superfan who believes that Gaines was murdered and is obsessed with figuring out the details behind Gaines' passing. You're probably wondering, well, how can Brooks be in the movie if Gaines is no longer alive? Well, the answer would be that Brooks was to star in the movie as Gaines when they would only show flashbacks to Gaines' life and musical career. Too bad we never got to see any of that. But in the end, by 2001, Garth realized what he was put on this earth to do, and that is to make good country music. And in 2001, he released his album titled Scarecrow, which featured an awesome gem of a song, Beer Run, with George Jones. According to Wide Open Country, it unfortunately took until about the year of 2002 before Garth stopped talking about one of the most bizarre movies I think we have ever heard and unfortunately never saw. But who knows, maybe we might see Garth try it all again, and I know that that may sound a bit absurd, but listen to this. In March of 2015, Garth was in Buffalo answering questions about the movie and the game's character. According to The Boot, Garth had this to say about giving it all another try. He said, I love the music, and that's what it's all about. Would I love to do a second one? Sure. Would I ever drop that much weight again? I don't think I could. Yeah, Garth changing his look is something I think country music fans will pretty much never forget. I'm sure we all had that same look on our face when we walked into a record store all them years ago and saw the cover of the Chris Gaines' Greatest Hits album and thought to ourselves, wait a minute, that can't be Garth Brooks. I remember thinking to myself, wait a minute, th this is the same guy who sings songs like Much Too Young, Rodeo, and Friends in Low Places while wearing cow Cowboy hats, tight blue jeans, cowboy boots, and all the twang in his voice. It, it just can't be. Well, yeah, it was. I mean, there is no...